Financial Survival Network, helping you to survive and thrive in the new economy. Get our complimentary newsletter at FinancialSurvivalNetwork.com. This is the Financial Survival Network. Hi, it's Carrie Lutz. I recently decided to move my retirement account into physical precious metals to hedge against the coming times. If you want to move an existing retirement account into physical precious metals that you can hold in your hand tax-free, there's no company that can do it more quickly and efficiently than Regal Assets. It took them just 24 hours to open my new IRA account, and all I had to do was fill out one simple form. The best part is that Regal Assets does all the work for you. They cover the setup and administrative costs for 2013. If you're interested in making the same move I did, call 855-678-6620, 855-678-6620. That's 855-678-6620 or visit them at regalassets.com. You'll be glad you did and tell them Carrie sent you. You are listening to the Financial Survival Network.com. I'm Kerry Lutz on 1230 WBZT. You know Mike, aka Mish Shedlock, uh, his site, globaleconomicanalysis.blogspot.com. He's been a commentator on the global economic collapse for years already. You've heard him on the Financial Survival Network.com. We're talking, well, his latest post is a gem. Lunatic Howls for Competitive QE Debasement, Another Swan Dive into Cesspool of Economic Silliness, Following Lemmings Over the Cliff. It's madness. Mish, welcome back to the Financial Survival Network. Well, welcome back. And it certainly is madness, isn't it? Uh, (laughs) uh, uh, Look at that. I mean, uh, and you just wonder where these people are coming from. Uh, uh, Ambrose Evans Pritchard at the Telegraph. He's a he's a pretty creative writer, and he was also one of the original Euroskeptics. He's one of the ones that came out over a decade ago and said, you know what, the euro can't possibly work. Here's all the structural reasons why. He laid the case out there, and then he just dives off the deep end all of a sudden. Uh, he uh, is trying to fix something that he knows can't be fixed, and he wants to do it by promoting more of the same policies that actually got us into this mess in the first place, which is loose monetary policies which spawn asset bubbles. And how many of those have we seen? We saw an uh, asset bubble certainly in Spain. We saw a property bubble here in the United States. We saw a dot-com bubble in 2000. All of these things, the housing bubble globally, all of these things were predicated on loose money. And he says, hmm, you know, this is what we need to do to fix the euro. When he knows damn well the euro can't be fixed. It's amazing, isn't it? Yeah. I mean, Milton Friedman, I think uh, back in 2002, he said that the euro was going to collapse eventually that its weaknesses would assert themselves. I don't remember the exact quote, but it was a doozy because it totally summed up in 10 words or less what was going to happen to the euro. And it's happening now. And Humpty Dumpty, all the king's men, can't put it back together again. Well, it's it's Europe, it's the United States, it's Japan. You know, uh, how, mathematically it can't work. How can every country engage in competitive currency debasement and expect to come out ahead when everyone's doing the same thing? So uh, supposedly the ECB needs to uh, keep up <laughs> with the U.S. And, and sure enough, today they they lowered their prime interest rate from uh, uh, a half a percent down to a quarter of a percent. They promised, just as uh, Bernanke has done in the United States, ECB President Mario Draghi has uh, come out and said, well, we're going to continue this accommodative policy for as long as it takes. And then he further added, we're willing to consider any and all options. Well, lovely. That's what Japan is doing. And all we're seeing here is just bigger and bigger asset bubbles. The, The U.S. stock market is in a huge bubble now. There are various bond bubbles, especially in corporate bonds. Uh, There are bubbles everywhere you look. These guys can't even see them. Yeah, and somehow 
you know, going into more debt is going to solve this, this problem. I just, uh, I don't know what they're thinking, what they're smoking, but I'd like to get some because it must be really good to separate you from reality to this level that you just can't see anything. Well, this, this is monitor's policy, uh, technically, uh, you know, weakening the currency, uh, not debt, although the, uh, although the Keynesian clowns are in on it too, especially France, uh, uh, the politicians there, you know, do want fiscal stimulus. So, so those the two things going on. Uh, uh, what the central banks are doing is is monetarist policy. Uh, what various governments are doing uh, uh, in Japan, and and certainly the U.S. budget deficit. Actually, budget deficits in general are nothing more than Keynesian stimulus. And what has it bought us? Nothing. I mean, we've got this permanent uh, unemployment problem. We got fifty million people close to it on food stamps, which I had one liberal. I don't want to call him an economist because he wasn't. Uh, political commentator say that that is stimulative. It's good for the economy, and we need more people on food stamps. And they're getting a cut right now of about a buck and a half a day, which is going to be bad for the economy under his definition. And no end in sight. Well, that's the key sentence right there. No end in sight. And I'm wondering when the financial markets are finally going to react to that, when gold is going to react to that. Everyone seems to be convinced that some sort of tapering is, com- is coming. I'm convinced that tape- no tapering is coming because the economy is going to deteriorate and these guys, uh, clowns actually, uh, central banks, all of them, are going to try more of what doesn't work to try and fix it. And um, <laughs> so far, my thesis is not uh, uh, panning out, but I think it will. Eventually, gold is going to respond to that. Yeah, well, you're, if we had markets that were free and actually traded and were about price discovery, your thesis probably would have worked already, right? But we don't have those kind of markets, do we? Well, no, we, we, we've certainly got uh, the ECB cornering the, the interest rate market in Europe. We've got the Fed cornering the interest rate market in the United States. And we've got uh, uh, Japan uh, uh, cornering the interest rate market in Japan. And we've got Switzerland, uh, uh, the Swiss National Bank, uh, actually has a peg on the uh, uh, currency in addition to the interest rate as well. So no, we don't have free announcements, and, and that is that is, there's no price discovery at all. So uh, people are reacting in a belief that the central banks have everything under control. When I believe it's an illusion, and um, uh, one of these days that illusion is going to burst and actually one of the biggest bubbles we have right now is a bubble belief that uh, uh, central banks can can uh, keep this policy going without any serious repercussions well that's the whole principle the whole belief behind uh, Bernanke he's a student of the Great Depression if only they had just printed more money during the Great Depression things would have worked out okay right well, uh, you know, and I know that that the cause of the Great Depression was the credit orgy that preceded it. The cause of the housing bubble uh, busting was the credit orgy that preceded it. And uh, this time, you know, banks are trying like mad to stimulate more credit, but they're not succeeding. But what they have done instead is is create another bubble um, in asset prices. And uh, they're attempting to reblow the housing bubble, and uh, they are uh, have certainly reblown the stock market bubble, and they've not created any jobs out of it. <clears throat> and when these bubbles burst, we're going to be right back, you know, where we started. What and, then? It's going to be interesting to see how this plays out. And at the same time that the Fed's trying to reinflate the housing bubble. The administration is taking steps to undermine their acts because there's new rules going into effect, technical rules dealing with the uh, secondary market and mortgages, 
um, putting in limitations, skin in the game rules so that independent mortgage banks will have a much more difficult time selling off the mortgages that they place if there's anything less than a 20% down payment on the home. And you're already seeing mortgage applications down, uh, home sales down, new home starts down, and new home sales down. So it, with minor exceptions in the Florida market, Texas market, North Dakota, and a few other places, New York City, you know, the go-go markets, you're seeing the real estate markets running out of steam. So the policy is obviously failing. Absolutely, the policy is failing. And, and, and right now, on existing homes, the biggest buyers are all cash buyers. What does that tell you? That, that, that tells you that that's a lot of hedge funds and speculators in the game, you know, all banking on uh, home prices and rents both rising. And um, once the bubbles burst again, I think we're going to see uh, they're not going to get the you know appreciation that uh, these places expected uh, when they made these home purchases. And they're going to have property taxes to pay. They're going to have upkeep. They're going to have maintenance. They're going to have to rent these things out. If they don't fetch the rental prices and the property prices don't appreciate like they think they will, and I don't think they will, uh, you know, then all of these investors that have done this, uh, well, they're not going to be leveraged out because these are all cash buyers, but they're not, certainly not going to get the rates of return that they expect. And then, and they're going to have a maintenance headache on, on their hands uh, 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 holding on to these uh, depreciating assets because houses have to be maintained. Yeah, I never understood the concept of investors buying large numbers of single-family homes. All right, you buy a multifamily home, you know, you own 500 units, you need to replace a roof, it's one roof. You need to replace a roof of 500 single family homes, that's 500 different jobs. You need to replace hot water heaters, air conditioning units, you need to mow 500 different lawns. I mean, it's, it's maintenance headache, it's maintenance hell. It made no sense to me over the long run because the infrastructure that you need the organization that you need to keep these homes up to snuff to be able to resell them three, five years down the road is just a nightmare. Well, one would think so. And, uh, you know, the only question here in my mind is, is, is how long uh, it takes for some of these bubbles to burst. Uh, with that, uh, I've got to run here. I'm uh, working on a, a chart of the euro here that shows the wild swings uh, 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 following ECB announcement today. It swung two cents. It's gained back uh, a cent of that. So uh, we'll see who comes out next, the ECB or the Fed, in, in, the, in the next step in uh, easing madness. But uh, it doesn't look too promising here to me. Okay. Mish, thanks for being on. Just give us your website again, your main website. We know it gets oh, picked uh, up all over. Uh, thanks. Uh, it's a long one, but I'll give you the shortcut way to get there. GlobalEconomicAnalysis.blogspot.com. But the easy way to find me is just do a Google search for Mish. That's my nickname, M-I-S-H. It's the first two characters of my first and last name, Mike Shebach. So do a Google search for Mish. Take you straight to my blog. I talk about uh, gold, interest rates, the global economy, Japan, Europe, several times a day, every day of the week. And I got, an, I got an even easier way than that, financialsurvivalnetwork.com. You're listening to this interview. Go to the show notes, click, click the link, and you'll get right to Mish's site instantly. Mish, always a pleasure, and we'll talk to you again real soon. Pleasure. Thanks. We'll see you. Hey, if you're a coffee connoisseur like me, you need to try an amazing new roaster out of L.A., Tonks Coffee. These guys are fanatical about delivering the best beans in the world. They source directly from the growers, roast it, and ship it to you within 24 hours. So it's the most fresh coffee you've ever tasted. Every two weeks, you get a new batch of incredible beans roasted to perfection. If you're hitting a cafe most mornings, this is a much better 
and more economical way to get great coffee. Tonks is by subscription only, and they're offering you a free sample. Use the URL tonks.org slash liberty. That's T-O-N-X dot org slash liberty. Get some for yourself or send it to someone you know who appreciates the finer things. Tonks.org slash liberty. Again, T-O-N-X dot org slash liberty. The Financial Survival Network, helping you to survive and thrive in the new economy. Get our complimentary newsletter at FinancialSurvivalNetwork.com. This is the Financial Survival Network. 